Now let's see the classification of groups, finite groups of order prime squared. That is, the order is p squared where p is a prime. For such groups, we only have two possibilities, namely either we have a cyclic group of order prime squared, so we know what this is, or it splits as a direct product of two cyclic groups of order p. So the total order is p squared. So precisely uh, the statement is the following. If a group G has order p squared, where p is prime, then, um, well, either, as we said, C is cyclic, or G is isomorphic to the direct product of two copies of ZP. So let's see why is this the case. The idea is the following. Um, so of course, the, in the cyclic case, there is nothing to, to prove. So we suppose that uh, G is not cyclic. Then what we have is that each element has order P. list each non-trivial element. Okay, so what we have is that uh, we can pick a bunch of these elements and they will generate uh, cyclic groups of order P. So, in other words, our group G will split into uh, a collection of certain number of uh, groups of order P. So the question is how many of these uh, subgroups we will have? Well, um, say each of these subgroups will be of the form 1, then some element and all of its powers. So here there will be uh, P minus one elements it would, since it will be always subgroups of order p and so on for the whole group so we will cover say i don't know p we will cover the whole group all the elements of of this group of course one the element one will be uh, so all these groups will be this disjoint except from the, the identity element 1. So here the number the number n of such uh, subgroups of order P has to, has to satisfy that uh, well n, n times this p minus 1 elements has to be uh, the total element of uh, the total number of elements in G, which is p squared, of course minus one element, which is the uh, identity that here repeats. So of course this uh, shows that n is precisely p plus one. So we have exactly p plus one uh, cyclic subgroups of G of order p. So now the claim is that we can, in fact, pick two such subgroups, say two generators A and B uh, of these groups, and write G as uh, generated by A and B. In fact, what we show here is even that G is isomorphic to the quotient G over A to the product of these two quotients. So here, of course, what I mean is that I picked uh, A and B, two generators of order P of two distinct uh, subgroups of this uh, subdivision that I mentioned. 
So I, I chose A and B and in this way, and this in particular means that the groups generated by A and B, of course, do intersect only trivially. Okay, so by this, uh, we can apply what we have uh, seen in the video called the group uh, morphisms and uh, normal subgroups. And there we see that whenever we have two normal subgroups which intersect, uh, here I made a small mistake, I wanted to write, which is, this is equal to one. So whenever we have two uh, normal subgroups which intersect at the identity, um, then we always have an injection, so uh, an injective morphism of groups, say f, from g to the quotient, to the product of the quotients of these two. So, of course, um, these, uh, this, this group here, g or a and g or b, have, they have order p, since our the quotients of a group G of order P square by a subgroup of order P. And therefore, uh, we have that G over A is just a copy of Z P. Same for G over B. Of course. So here we have an injective morphism of groups. Uh, on the one side we have P square elements and on the other side we have p times p, also p square elements, and therefore we conclude that this morphism, this injective morphism, for morphism is also surjective, and so it is an isomorphism of groups.